how to calibrate each axis. After reviewing the homing versus calibrating video, if you have determined that calibration is necessary, follow these steps. But first, you'll need to know the following tips. When entering measurements on the calibration screens, use these formats. For imperial measurements, always use inches. Enter the whole number, a space, then the fraction if necessary. The number may also be entered with a decimal point. For metric measurements, use millimeters. Enter the whole number with a decimal if necessary. The saw must be a manual mode to make most selections in calibration screens. It will tell you if auto mode is needed for a specific step. Take caution during any calibration procedure as boards may be automatically ejected after they have been processed. Ensure all personnel are clear of the outfeed area. Disconnect power to the saw at the disconnect switch before doing any work or evaluation of the machine. Lock out tag out the disconnect switch as shown and according to your company's guidelines. Always begin with an inspection of any affected area or chamber. Because all axes work together and affect one another, inspect moving parts that may indirectly affect other axes. This inspection should include checking for barriers, scrap lumber, or other obstructions creating jams. Looking for damage to the mechanical parts. Inspecting cables and sensors for damage or loose wires. Cleaning and lubricating the equipment, as well as performing any tasks on the preventive maintenance schedule that are overdue or almost due. The preventive maintenance schedule can be found in your manual or online. Also, be sure to check that the in-feed side roller, the LASM fixed jaw, and the outfeed chain are aligned properly per the manual. Check for wear on the LASM fixed jaw, the spikes on the LASM clamp jaw, and the in-feed side rollers. Be aware that both the gripper fixed and clamp jaws will wear over time. Check the sensor locations. If they are loose, they may need to be repositioned according to the video on that topic. If preventive maintenance doesn't fix the problem, it is time to calibrate. But if you're unsure which axis to calibrate, use the pre-calibration feature to help determine what's happening with your saw. You'll need a 16-foot 2x4 for this step. Restore power to the saw and touchscreen, and open the blade software. Ensure the status banner on the blade home screen shows Ready. You may need to press the Home System button on the toolbar if the system is not in the ready state. The saw must be a manual mode for the Home System button to work. Change to Auto Mode. Then press the Pre-Calibration Boards icon on the tool ribbon. Press Start and follow the on-screen instructions. This helps determine if the gripper or LASM needs to be calibrated. Once you know which axis to calibrate, you can continue with the following steps. 1. Open the blade software if it's not already done. 2. Place the saw in manual mode. 3. It is recommended that you back up your configuration prior to calibrating, and again immediately afterwards. You can back up your configuration from the tools ribbon, and a new file will be saved each time. 4. Ensure the status banner on the Blade Home screen shows Ready. 5. From the Tools menu, select Calibrate. The calibration window appears, giving you the option to calibrate any axis or create a straight board for use during calibration. Let's talk about creating a straight board first. It's always important to use a straight board when calibrating any axis, but for the CLS and elevation axes, it is even more important. The Create Straight Board feature trims one edge of a board to ensure a perfect edge. The Cut Straight Board button is available at any login level, although it can only be selected when the saw is in auto mode and the saw blade is started. Be sure to read the on-screen notes. Now it's time to calibrate. Select the axis to calibrate first. Only one axis can be calibrated at a time, so give thought to which axis is most likely the problem or what is the most logical order to affect change. 
In general, you should always calibrate the angle axis first. Only calibrate the axis that requires it, since overcalibrating can cause other system complications. But because of the relationship between certain axes and uncertainties you may have regarding which axes to calibrate, you may need to calibrate a certain axes more than once to get all measurements perfect. Let your cut parts decide. In general, less is more. With the current axis selected, choose Start, following the instructions and notes on screen as you go. Each axis has its own set of steps, so proceed to the video for each specific axis to complete this training. From there, you will hear tips and tricks from MyTech's technical experts and more detailed explanations of the on-screen instructions.